So this is how to do a rear brake from a parent steer bar. So the only thing you're going to need is the brake cable itself and a 5mm Allen wrench. So first thing is we want to take this handle and again there are many different ways to do the brakes. I'm going to show you one method. It seems to work pretty well and usually requires minimal adjustment. So what I'm going to do is take this ferrule and spin the outer one out and I'm going to look underneath make sure that it's about two-thirds of the way out and then line up the slots so that I can fit the cable through. So I'll take the brake cable, unwind it, take the end of it, pull back and insert it. Make sure the cable feeds through and then let the handle back out. And then I want to make sure that the sheath gets pushed back in so I'm going to grab the, hand, hand, the end of the cable and pull on the sheath with my other hand make sure it's tight and that will force it up into the brake cable brake handle. From there we feed the cable down through all the slots. This can be a little tricky so just be patient with it. Depending on handle there's two to three. I'm going to pull it almost all the way out but I still want a little bit of slack at the top. And then from the bottom it's going to feed around to the brake itself. And down here, there's going to be one bolt to loosen with a 5mm Allen. So loosen it a little bit. And you might be able to take your fingers or just keep loosening. And you need to loosen this enough that you can get the cable through that hole right there. So first I'm going to feed the cable through the back end and pull it tight. And then feed the cable down through and be snug like that. Now I want to keep pulling on the cable with my left hand and then this is my method if you can try this you can try a different way but my method is to take that caliper and tighten it all the way and then I'm going to tighten this bolt up so it's a little tricky with just one person so if you have another person around that can help You want to make it tight enough the cable doesn't come out, but you don't have to tighten it all the way just yet. Okay, so the next step is I'm going to make sure I squeeze the brake four, five, six times, make sure all the slack comes out. And you can see it barely squeezes, and that's the point of this. Because we come back to these ferrules, and the reason that we brought it out so far is that this is the minor adjustment on the brake, whereas the major adjustment was on the brake cable itself and where that I cinched that up with the bolt. So when I turn the outside ferrule and I turn it into the handle, it's actually taking tension off of the brake cable. So I'm going to turn it back into the handle about half the way and then pull on the handle again several times, get the slack out, and then try it again on the bike and this should be a good measure where it allows the bike to roll freely and then still gives a good squeeze about halfway through and stops the bike. And if you do it this way, I see that usually you don't need to make any more adjustments and this is about all you need for the brake adjustments. A okay, final step on the rear brake is to take this safety cap and put it on the end. So this is one of the smallest parts and a lot of people end up throwing it away. But hopefully if you're watching this you take note of it and don't throw it away. So we'll put it on the end. Put it on, then you can take any old pliers, needle nose, whatever you feel like. Give it a good squeeze and that should clamp it enough that it stays on. And then just to get the cable out of the way I'm going to bend it out of the way a little bit. 
Some folks like to cut these cables off, and uh, I suggest not doing that. Uh, it does look pretty if you cut it short, but the problem is if you ever have to readjust the brake or you need to take the brake cable out to change out the calipers, whatever it may be, then you're left with nothing to pull on the cable. You have nothing to pull the tension on, nothing to adjust if you've cut it off. So I suggest just capping it, bend it out of the way. It's much better that way than cutting it off. Now we're going to put the front toe levelers on. Uh, this is an accessory, so your trike may or may not have this. Uh, but you'll see two parts. The main part here with the clamp and the pulley. And then the kit may or may not come with some plastic tubing like this. And uh, what we're going to do first is take the wing nuts off of here. the back part of the clamp off and bring it over to the bike. This is where your plastic tubing will come in handy. So this one's a little bent out of shape but basically we're going to put it around the stem and then take those two pieces of the clamp. The one part with the pulley want to go on the front and the back part come back here and this is usually a little tricky to get them snapped in get all the parts snapped together then you're going to take those wing nuts get one side started and make, put the other side on and then just work those down and work them side to side until the clamp is secure and you just want it on there secure so it doesn't come off, but you don't want it so tight that it's squeezing the stem immensely. So that should about do it. And then from there, you've got two parts to add to your pedals. Okay, so we're going to attach this to the pedal now. So I'm going to take this off and show you first the bolt itself has a square part underneath the head and that's to fit into the pedal itself and not allow it to turn. So I'm going to put the washer back on that and then on this part itself you'll see it's not exactly shaped symmetrically. There's a flat side and a side that sticks out. We want the flat side to be up against the pedal so that it can sit. So on the opposite side we'll do the exact same thing. Put the bolt with the washer through it Take our flat side, feed it through, take the wing nut, and tighten it up. And the last thing to check after getting it tight is just to make sure that the cable is at a good uh, distance to keep those toes up. And this one looks pretty good. It could be a little tighter. I could retie that knot. We'll try this for now and get the kiddo riding on it flat and we can tighten it right up against the pedal. So we'll take our bolt, insert it through the pedal, make sure the flat side is up, and then take the wing nut, put it on, Make it as tight as we can. Finger tight should be pretty good. If you can't get it real tight, you can use pliers and tighten it like that. So we'll do that to both sides. Okay, one thing I want to show here is that the back sprocket that's attached to the rear axles uh, actually has two different sprockets and right now we're attached to the fixed drive also known as fixie so when the wheel turns this is fixed to it so the sprocket goes right with every pedal turn and when you're coasting the pedals are still turning because the axle is turning you have the option to switch the chain to the other sprocket so you'd have to break the chain switch it over but then you've got a coasting sprocket here so 
uh, in that case, the rider, when coasting, say downhill or just on a flat, and they stop pedaling, the bike will continue to go, but their pedals won't follow with the wheel. So it's a little more advanced. Some riders can handle it, some can't. But that is an option. You can break the chain, switch it over to here, and make sure that the sprocket is lined up with the pedal sprocket so that your chain is straight. And uh, yeah, that's an option. So we're going to do a safety check on this bike here and most items on the safety check are the same regardless of which trike you're doing it on. This one happens to be a 1420XL. So the first handful of items are all on the front end so we'll tackle those first. The very first one and really important is to make sure that the handlebar is on there tight. So I find this one a lot that when people are building the bike, especially new ones, uh, new people first doing this, they don't tighten this tight enough. So they, they tighten it down where they think it's tight, but it's really not. And the easy way to check is to again hold it with your legs, your front wheel, and first make sure it's aligned. You want to make sure that the handlebar is straight. So then take it and turn it. And look at this one. I can turn it fairly easy. So you don't want that to uh, be the same as a child riding down the road, hits a bump and tries to steer and that handlebar goes all wonky. So we got to tighten this up, so I made sure it's straight. I'm going to take the plug out, and then I'm going to take my 6 millimeter Allen wrench and crank it, and it's pretty easy on the first turn. I want to make sure that I really crank this down because I don't want that turning. So there we go, put the plug back in, and that should be good. You can also check these two bolts on top, but uh, that's more of a functional thing. Then we're going to look at the brake itself. So we want to make sure that the brake pads when squeezed, they contact just the metal rim of the wheel. They don't contact this rubber portion of the tire. Uh, so double check that. This one looks good. It's a little, little crooked, but it's all touching the rim, so it should be good. And then really similar, close by, there should be a washer on the outside of this fork. It's called a safety washer. Uh, and you'll see a little lip on this fork right here. That's to make sure that even if this, these nuts do loosen up, that the wheel can't fall out. Uh, and that's why that lip is turned up on the outside, it's a safety measure. The last two things are related to the brake. So I want to make sure that pick up the bike with one hand, spin the wheel. It spins nice, but when I squeeze the brake, it stops really well. And I want to make sure that the brake stops about halfway in between fully depressed and not depressed at all. That one looks pretty good. And then the last thing is to use the parking brake portion of this. So it's that little button right here. I'm going to squeeze the brake, put that parking button in, and that should be squeezing the front wheel enough that it can't move. And so this one looks pretty good. And I'm going to wheel it forward and it can't really roll. So that one means it's, it's set well and uh, it's good to go. So the next things we're going to check on the safety checklist is a couple things around the rear tires and wheels. The first thing is to look at the tread. We want to make sure the arrow is pointing forward. That gives more traction to the rider, especially going up hills. Uh, then also want to look at the tires. So in this case, these aren't puffed up far enough. So we want to make sure you uh, get it to the right PSI. Uh, double check on the tires themselves. And most everything is 35, but make sure you double check that. So after this, we'll make sure we uh, air up that properly. And then the last thing is you want to make sure that the rear wheel is tightened properly. So the nut behind this wheel cap, we want to make sure is tight up against the wheel. Not too tight, but tight. And the easy way to check is to lift this up a little bit and pull on it. And this one's actually sliding back and forth, so it's really loose. And you often find this with new builders because they just put the cap on and don't, don't really tighten it down. They just do it as far as their hand can go. Uh, but even if it was tighter, you still want to check it and then kind of hold it on the top and you hear that wobbling. You don't want to make you don't want it to be rocking like that. So you want to make sure it's a little tight. So we'll take that wheel cap off and I've shown earlier, easiest way is to take a flathead screwdriver, poke it in, and pull it away. In this case, or if you find this, you may find that the wheel cap is on there so tight you can't get your screwdriver behind it. So this is a little trick. If you take a small Allen wrench, find one of those holes, you can usually kind of get behind it and pry it like so. 
using that hole and get it out far enough that now you can stick the screwdriver behind it and then work it back and forth like we've shown before side to side rolling the wheel whatever it takes and eventually that cap will pop off and you can see that nut is quite loose so we're going to take our 22 millimeter wrench or our adjustable wrench and tighten it up tighten it up to the washer starts moving and then check it and we're pretty good now so put the wheel cap back on and we're good to go so on the safety checklist we want to make sure that the pedals are tight that's certainly something you don't want loosening up while riding so you can take a 15 millimeter uh, wrench and remember that the left pedal tightens by turning left and loosens by going right so you just want to take this and try it this one seems pretty tight so it's in there I'll do the opposite uh, side the right hand side and it's pretty tight too you want to make sure those are tight the next thing is you want to check the seat and make sure that it's on here tight so you just grab it kind of move it around so this one's actually pretty loose it's still sitting on there but they didn't tighten it down quite far enough so I'm gonna eyeball it make sure it's straight and then take a 14 millimeter wrench and make sure I tighten both sides equally get it snug and then try it again and shouldn't be able to turn it so this is good to go now next on the safety checklist you want to make sure that the parent steer bar is tight uh, this is something that's often not tightened down it's also one of the areas that you remove to get the bike into cars so it's constantly being loosened and tightened back up so really you just want to take this and you can have somebody hold the front wheel or you can put the steering pin in and then give it a nice tug left and right and it should stay tight in here make sure the wheel goes with it if not, you can take a 5mm Allen wrench and tighten up the bolts back here, snug them down a little bit, and that should be enough to keep that in place. And then the last thing, also related to the rear steer, is you want to tip this over and just give a look at your metal plate right here and ensure that all these bolts are tightened. Because these are often missed as well, so you want to make sure this is tightened into the bar and then these two are tightened to the frame and they both look pretty tight so you can take a five millimeter wrench and try those tighten them up this should have been done before but you can also take a wrench and kind of squeeze it in there make sure it's tight on there